Alright folks, welcome. Uh, this is my Stamplar build. Uh, it is a modification of a Skinny Cheeks build. Well, and what I have done is I have taken a, that build along with my own knowledge of the Stamplar, so on and so forth, and simplified the rotation down to approximately seven buttons. Um, and right now it's my favorite DPS to be on. It's it's harder than anything else I've got. And generally overall I just find it really fun to play. So we'll just go ahead and dive right into it. Uh, looking at the sets, we have the Maelstrom Perfected Greatsword. If you don't have the Perfected version, you just have the, the Maelstrom Greatsword. That's perfectly fine. You don't need the Perfected version. I happened to get it when I was grinding for a different uh, Maelstrom weapon. So, if you don't have it and you just have the Maelstrom weapon, perfectly fine. What you do want to make sure you have, though, is that you have it infused with a weapon damage enchant. Also, if you want to use a deadly sword, deadly great sword on this build, you can just be aware you're not going to get quite the amount of damage out of it because critical charge. This does a lot. This does extra bleed damage and will significantly add to your dots as you do more damage over time. And the reason that you want the weapon damage enchant is because that will boost your damage based off of the light attacks that you hit when you're on the back bar of this rotation. Other set we're running is deadly with two precise deadly daggers, one with a flame enchant, one with a poison enchant. That does affect our champion points a little bit and I will show you all that in a minute. Uh, we are running Reliquin all the way down, all body pieces of divine. This is a slight deviation from the other builds that I have in that I am not wearing all medium armor on a stam character. I am actually wearing five medium to light. There are a couple of reasons for this. First off, I'm running near Neth, and the reason for that is, is that with the stam floor and biting jabs, which is your main spammable, along with all your light attacks, you are doing a crap ton of direct damage. So you're proccing this Lich Crystal to spawn a lot monster sets can now crit so you are doing even more damage and reliquin is the same it's always been your light attacks continue to stack as long as you keep those light attacks up you are in great shape now with the jewelry I am running deadly jewelry uh, there has been some debate over which is better bloodthirsty or infused the theory being is that bloodthirsty as you kill it you're gonna get a crap ton of damage as it goes down in health and towards the end you are going to be dumping damage out left and right but I've tested this multiple times as it turns out infuse does do a little bit more damage because you get that consistent boost for the entirety of the time you're in combat rather than just at the end so there is no ramping up but it also means that you don't start out lower that consistent rate actually gives you a higher amount of damage than a slow increase over time which is why I'm running three infused all with weapon damage enchants uh, now with the light armor, there's a couple of reasons I'm running a uh, light monster helm. One is that, and it's all in the light armor skill line, so I will show you all that real quick. So this is our reason right here, or well, one of the two, is that it gives you progeny, which this works out to just over 2% extra crit. This build has 59% crit, so 2% extra, there is a big difference between 57 and 59%. But the other thing that Light Armor gives us is pin. So no need to worry about sharpened or champion points. Just throw on those two Light Armor pieces and there you go. You have your penetration bonus with one of the champion points. That's a passive that you don't have to slot. It's up over 2,000. As you can see right here, I have over 2,500 physical pin. That's because of the Light Armor. Now, when it comes to our, and I'm going to go over the skills, but let's go over the champion points real quick. Because we're running, first thing to look at is you'll notice this is really high. That's because I'm running flame on one dagger, poison on the other. Since I am doing that, I am doing flawless ritual and war mage along with battle mastery 
and might. If I was running to flame, I'd do I'd only do this one. If I was running to poison or any form of martial, which are listed right here, physical poison, bleed, disease damage, any of that, I'd only do this one. But with me running poison and flame, I do both sides of this mini tree. Uh, another change from other Templar setups is no longer running fighting finesse for that extra crit. Also, I'm on a Khajiit, which does help. Um, generally speaking, right now, Dark Elf and Khajiit are considered the two highest for Stam DPS, particularly Templars. Uh, so, generally speaking, I was skeptical about removing fighting finesse at first, but slotting deadly aim for your single target attacks, your biting aura, master at arms, and running backstabber does definitely do more damage. Again, get what you can out of here, um, but you definitely want to get master at arms, biting aura, deadly aim, and backstabber. This one is buffing pretty much, this is buffing half hour attacks, this is buffing pretty much everything and this is also buffing uh, certain skills that I'll point out and backstabber well you can't go wrong with 15% extra crit damage just standing behind a target uh, with the red tree I personally run this for some extra health recovery and just be a little bit more survivable and I run these three up here because for me I find them to be the best just for general sustain and resistance and health. Uh, this build is on the squishier side of uh, the green tree you can do whatever you want to. This build is a little bit on the squishier side with only 19,000 health but that's because I pretty much always run a parse food. Now on the subject of food this is the food that I'm running. Lava foot soup and salt trees 4900 stam with fourth with almost 500 stam recovery this is what I prefer because you can't do damage if you don't have resources there are those people who prefer dubious to increase their health and survivability I personally don't like running dubious for that because I want to keep the sustain and extra stam from this so for extra survivability I swap the near neth head off for the gaze of Sithis and I swap the near neth shoulders off for the slime crawl arm chops when you do that you're going to lose a little bit of weapon damage but you're going to increase your crit up above 60 percent overall you do lose some DPS doing this but you are definitely a lot tankier as you can see the spell and physical resistances are now at 18,000 with a max health of 23k that's really good um, but if you're going for max DPS, you want near Neth. But remember, max DPS is not all there is to it. You can't DPS while you're laying on your back dead. Although I have tried, believe me. Um, now, with that being said, your potions that you are going to run on this, your standard uh, weapon power pots. I mean, they work. Uh, one thing you definitely want to do with your potions is even if you're not running this running your character as a crafter you want to make sure you get your alchemy up to 50 so that way you can get this medicinal use resulting in potions lasting 30 percent longer what this means is that almost all your potions have a 45 second cooldown but if you have a 45 second cooldown and the potion last 47.6 seconds you have over a hundred percent uptime on that and that really helps a lot when you're in combat not and this is outside of DPS testing and parse testing it really helps a lot to have that 47 second uh, uptime on to the skills uh, this particular build is like I said a little bit different you want to stack as many fighter skill abilities as you can uh, that's why on the bar, on my main bar, I run Biting Jabs, Barb Trap, Camouflage Hunter, and Dawnbreaker. I also run Flawless Dawnbreaker because of the weapon and spell damage increase for 20 seconds. With the way Templars tend to build Ultimate and Stamplars tend to build Ultimate, you're keeping that up a lot. I can't give you an exact percentage of the uptime, but you have a really good uptime on it. 
this is my main heal, Vigor. Um, you can also do the Templar heal, but there's a reason why you don't want to with this build, and that has to do with magic, because with the recent update, this build now has two magic abilities on it. Uh, repentance is always good. Uh, if you're going to run a parse test and you really want to make sure that you're getting the absolute max just swap repentance out for any fighter's guild ability and swap this out for any fighter's guild ability to get you that that little bit of extra um weapon and spell damage because the passives in fighter's guild increase your weapon and spell damage by three percent for each slider's fighters of guild ability slotted it helps it helps a lot now the rotation Rotation on this is actually not overly complicated, but we are running two magic skills, which is why and I'll go ahead and tell you this With a max magic of about 14,000 you're not going to get more than two magic skills off and be able to sustain it But there's a reason why we're running the ones we are so first off is stampede This is where the maelstrom a great sword comes in because this is a version of critical charge is a morph of it and this does a lot of damage it creates an AOE underneath the target it creates a dot and not to mention that every time you hit with it it's a critical strike so it's doing a lot of damage and you got a 15 second cool or you got 15 seconds on this so you've got a pretty good amount of time that you can do other abilities for you have to wrap back around and proc this to go off again ritual of retribution you're just doing so much damage with it 3600 magic damage because remember with the last update almost everything scales off whichever is higher your weapon or spell damage well with weapon damage being higher that's what everything's scaling off of so you're looking at this you got 12 seconds and every two seconds of that you're getting 3600 not to mention that it's going up by five percent every tick so you're getting a lot of damage and not to mention that it covers a huge area and just is a giant AOE to have on the ground that does a pretty good amount of damage. Now Solar Barrage by itself it's not great. I mean you get you know 2200 magic damage every two seconds for 10 seconds. That's you know there's you know you could run Blazing Spear you could run something else. So why am I running Solar Barrage? Empower. As long as you have Solar Barrage running, your light and heavy attacks are doing 40% more damage. Now, if you do the rotation right on a target dummy, you're never going to have to do a light attack. And in actual combat, when you are doing heavy attacks, if you're running in power, it's going to boost your damage by a lot. 40% is a huge jump in your damage because most of your damage is going to come from this but your second highest one is going to come from weaving in your light attacks which is where light attack weaving comes in it's so what you're going to want to do is light attack skill light attack skill light attack skill and then bar swap uh, you're going to want to drop barb trap which again this one has a lovely bleed dot that does a lot of damage but your but the real reason we're running this is that it gives you an extra 10% crit damage which you can never have enough crit damage and it will it that's the reason that we run barb trap is it gives you that extra crit damage this one got buffed a few updates ago and it is now going to it can release up to 18,000 damage but you gotta remember that if you crit off that you're going to do even more damage than that you're looking at I've had this thing proc for 60 70 K um, and generally you're going to be able to get this off twice per each one of these you're not gonna have quite a hundred percent uptime on this you're in closer to 80 percent 90 percent but it's made up for with this and this is what is being boosted by this champion point right here. I believe Reliquin is also being boosted by this as well. Uh, both of these are going to be boosting our Biting Jabs, 
which these are what make Stamplard so brutal. Um, at this point, if you you might even be able to get away with not running weapon pots, because Biting Jabs now grants you Major Brutality and Major Sorcery for 10 seconds. That's a long time, and that is a lot of damage that you're getting back. So even if you're not running weapon pots and you want to run a tri-stat because this build does require some magic, you're still going to be getting Major Brutality and Major Sorcery at all times. But regardless, Biting Jabs is our main spammable. In my opinion, it's the best spammable there is. And this is where, again, that Empower comes in because you'll see, because I'm going to run a test for you in a minute, that the number of light attacks that you're procking off in here, even if you don't see them, they are procking, is getting boosted significantly by that Empower. Um, proc Fall or Stormbreaker whenever you get a chance because it's going to increase your weapon and spell damage by 300 for 20 seconds on top of giving you a nice piece of burst damage plus a nice another nice dot. Uh, you can also run on your back bar pretty much any other ulti you want but if you're going for sheer damage there are those who argue that Crescent Sweep is really nice but I'll go ahead and tell you that this is going to hit higher Meteor might hit higher than this, but if it does, it's not by much. And I tend to lean more towards this anyways. The other thing is that now, since you are no longer using the Maelstrom Bow, the bow is notorious for being a little finicky with its light attacks. The Maelstrom Greatsword, your light attacks, if you're light attack weaving, and you're just learning how to do it, you're going to find that the Greatsword is so much more forgiving in comparison to the bow. The only thing that you have to be worried about is that when you're on this bar and you bar swap to this one you need to be careful after you proc your stampede because you there's going to be a minor delay but it's not really significant and you're going to have to keep an eye on your magic to make sure that you're not running out and procking those abilities too often that is why I run vigor as a self heal and not a magic as a self heal because again I'm already running two expensive magic abilities. So with all that being said, let's go ahead dive in and I'll show you how this rotation works on a target dummy that doesn't hit back. So we're going to walk up, we're going to pop our potion, bar swap, throw out barb trap, and then hit with stampede. And then from there, that's pretty much the whole rotation. Every time that goes down, throw it back up. Make sure to keep your barb trap up. Keep that up as much as humanly possible. And you're going to see here that I'm going to have one of those skills to run out on the front, on the back bar. That's fine. I'm just going to go back. Throw that back up. Because we're getting so much damage off of the purifying light that it's okay to have one of those skills run off. And if you are running Relic one, you definitely want to make sure that you get those light attack stacks up because they are going to give you a crap ton of damage as well. Alright, Barb Trap is going to run out. That's okay, we'll catch it on the back bar. There you go. Get a set of stabs in, get that up. Got two sets in there. And if you can see that little blue spot procking in the background, that is Nirneth going off. On this build, Nirneth goes off quite a bit.
Are you going to reproc the uh, purifying light just every time you see it go off? Generally about every six seconds. And there you go. Like I said, this thing hits hard. I've hit all the way up to 95.7. So, probably, it will definitely hit hard for you. Anyway, I hope this helps y'all, and y'all have a great day. Bye.